I saw you on Broadway in the Rothschilds, in fact. You don't look that old. It's a long time ago, you know. Do you realize how long ago it is? What year, do you remember what year it was? 70, 70, 70, 1970, 71. That's almost 50 years ago. George Schlatter, when I asked him, and you're gonna, you'll be on uh, stage with him, George Schlatter, who's being honored uh, uh, tonight, uh, I asked him what, what does he think of uh, a Jewish Americans' contribution to American Jewish culture, and he said, well, look at the theater. <laughs> well, look at the theater, yeah. Sure, I did, uh, with, with how many shows I did? I did one with, with uh, Julie Stein, with uh, uh, Harnick and Bach, with uh, you name it. So you look at the theater, indeed. Do you feel that Jewish humor has become mainstream American humor now through uh, Seinfeld and all the years? I don't know what Jewish humor is anymore, you know. It's, it was so mainstream that it's, uh, uh, it, it's not Jewish humor anymore. You know, it's just plain old humor. Yeah. Your program, Danny Arnold? Danny Arnold. What was his contribution to American culture in your, your view? I'm going to give you a card. Okay. And we'd like to put you on our feature, too. Good television. <laughs> Good television. That's all it was. It wasn't groundbreaking. There had been gang comedies before. Look back to Bilko, you know, the plenty of things. It, wasn't, it was just well done. The year that we did uh, Barney, there was a... Uh, uh, a, a gang comedy in a bar that didn't succeed until Cheers did it a few years later, just did it well. And that, I think that was the contribution. It was just well done television. I haven't seen that in a long time. How, how did your uh, expertise, your education and uh, virtuosity in clarinet playing influence your, your ability to be comfortable on the stage? I'll tell you how it influenced it. First of all, I was the, also the band singer. Yeah, oh yeah, I was I was the guy who jumped up out of the saxophone section and sang the pop tune of the day, um, and and its its biggest influence was that it, it it kept me alive for a long time. Well, I that that the long time that it took me to to finally make it on Broadway. Did you perform weddings? Oh yeah, wedding. Oh yeah. You, I may have performed at your wedding. Check your photo album. <laughs> In New York City? New York City, yeah. Um, so, comfortable on stage, how did you transition from a musician to actor? Oh, that's, did, did you that's a long story, and it has to do with, with, a, with a, a, a question that has haunted me my whole life. I was in the Army. I was in the, uh, uh, an Army band. Uh, I had never had anything to do with theater. I never went to the theater. And uh, the piano player who I played you know, on weekends we played for the service club and the officers club, and he he used to get borrowed by special services, and uh, they didn't have a, a resident piano player. And one time he just turned to me and said, "Listen, now you want to sing a song in the show? I'll I'll have him borrow you too." And I said, "Okay, sure," and that started the whole thing, which leaves me with the uh, conundrum. What if he didn't ask me? I don't know that I would have ever thought to have gone into the theater. But you aren't just an ordinary singer. You're a school, uh, operatic school, aren't you? No. No, I was a band singer, a, uh, a crooner who learned how to sing loud to get into, into Broadway shows. No, I was not. Oper I studied eventually voice and... Uh, you know, part of that was working on operatic arias, but only for training purposes. Never, never the opera, no. You've done a lot of work on behalf of Israel through the JNF. I am the national spokesman for Jewish National Fund, and I've been uh, for some 20 years now. Uh, so I have indeed, uh, and that's only the last 20 years, spent my life doing... Uh, benefits for um, Jewish causes all along but uh, with with JNF I've I've uh, s stuck with with JNF to to um, uh, for now now it's 20, 20 years so when you call about buying a tree I answer the phone your voice is on the machine That's right I answer the phone <laughs> how do you think uh, 
America under this new administration is doing don't, towards don't, Israel? Oh, don't, don't ask. Don't. Well, they, they're not thrilled. I was just reading an article in the paper. They're not, uh, even though they got a wonderful relationship, I understand Israel's not at all thrilled with the... Uh, Only about the, the uh, medium-range ballistic missiles, but in terms of moving the embassy, recognition of uh, Israel's threat and support? Oh, that's all yeah, yeah politics. I mean, all that accomplishes somebody. Uh, some, some, somebody will get stabbed. That's, I don't I don't see that as a major move of any kind. It's only symbolic. And they haven't moved it. Don't They're moving it May 14th. Huh? They're moving it May 14th. The whole, they are going to? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, 250 Americans going over in support of that. I mean, will that influence your view? No, I don't think it was a good idea in the first place. I mean, what's the point? To rub somebody's nose in it? I didn't think that was a good idea to begin with. What do you know about Israel that most Americans ought to learn from? Hmm. Get on a plane and go over there and see. It's an amazing place to be. Uh, inspirational. Um, just a just a great place to be and to see uh, and see what can be done out of nothing in 70 years. You're proud of that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I've been my my father was not a very religious man, but he was a Zionist, and uh, so I grew up with Zionism long before there was in Israel. So, uh, do you feel that the, the term Zionism has been uh, redefined away from us? I don't. I have. I have no opinion in the, in the, in the matter. It doesn't matter. There's an Israel, and it's going to stay there, and uh, we'll do whatever we have to do to keep it there. That's all.